Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you could probably tell by the title, we will be talking about a potential, at this point most likely, um, snowstorm that will be occurring across the Midwest and Great Lakes tomorrow into Tuesday. So, and it's already occurring across the, the West and portions of the Upper Plains. Unusual, um, last time I coined it historic in a title. And while that may have been a bit more of an aggressive side of things, I still think it's rather appropriate as, for example, just giving an example because I know of the fact here that in Chicago, uh, our biggest snowfall past April 16th was 3.1, and this snowstorm occurring past April 16th is for was forecasted to bring 4 to 6 inches for Chicago, and you may be asking, why was it forecasted? Why still isn't it? The thing is that this snowstorm and its heaviest snow has shifted to the south um which probably makes things worse all right so if you guys uh, just want to you know enjoy this weather enjoy this you know, youtube channel and you enjoy this content consider liking and subscribing to this channel um again that is obviously once you decide whether or not this channel resonates with you otherwise let's get into this video without further ado so the first thing i want to look at is the radar Okay, so looking at the United States and Southern Canada radar, what we have going on is really not that much across the Eastern United States. We do have some showers. You can see in some of them um, are uh, potentially a bit heavy, as you can see into Southern Indiana, those yellow colors. Um, some moderate rain, no really thunderstorms or severe weather, where we do see quite a bit more activity as the peninsula of Florida to notice that this thing has been going on through the panhandle for most of, most of the afternoon and actually the day you can see there's 240 right into Tallahassee, Jackson, Jacksonville getting some rain as it slides towards Tampa and the southern Florida with that squall line again pretty powerful definitely some strong winds maybe some damaging winds probably a few severe warnings are as well up notice off the coast into the Bahamas and the Caribbean islands we do have quite a bit of severe or rainy weather that uh, obviously has some potent thunderstorms with it. Um, I don't know if, if it exactly, you know, some of these are severe warned or severe criteria, but what we have further to the north regarding our snowstorm, notice, right? Look at that, Thunder Bay picking up some snow, some rain. The system is up here, the first part of it, and it's quite profound. It's not really shown on the radar because it's uh, just a bit uh, cut off. The radar doesn't go out that far. And notice there are some snow showers in Winnipeg, right? Manitoba, Saskatchewan, northern North Dakota. That is indicative of the cold air that is following this cold front end. You could barely, barely see it. Only once I put it into motion, there's our cold front tracking through. But you will probably notice that we have a lot of precip on the backside, right? This is kind of a, a second phase of the system. Second part. It's very strong, and that's what will be producing the actual snowstorm. It already is across uh, Montana. You know, nothing historic for those areas, as that's usually expected to see snow in April. But you could see um, Great Falls, Billings, and there could be some relatively high amounts, especially across a Black Hill area. You could see right there, Great Falls was... In some rain, some snow, they've transitioned, and now they're solidly seeing the snow. Um, and then there's a few more locations that are seeing rain, snow, depending on where you are. Obviously, it will be changing over as this cold air continues to rush down, as indicated by those convective showers. Okay, um, I do want to notice that, uh, point out that there are some showers across the desert southwest, so um, that could produce some sort of uh, maybe uh, concern with some landslides, flash flooding, though these, though these thunderstorms don't look too severe. Let's take a look at the National Weather Service. Notice what we have a lot of watches and warnings across these locations here, indicative of a uh, cold air mass, right? And then right there we have those winter storm warnings. And you can see into uh, Wyoming, they have winter storm warnings, which usually means probably some decent amounts of snow as it's Wyoming. Four or two, honestly, I thought there would be more. Um, let's see on the winter storm warning, this might be just a particular location. Five to nine, so yeah, that's usually the criteria. Um, and the criteria actually is 6 inches plus in 24 hours, or uh, 4 inches plus in 18 hours, uh, I think, so. I don't know, I, or sorry, uh, 6 inches plus in 24 hours, or 4 inches plus in 12 hours, I think that's what it is. And then notice, uh, this is what South Dakota, you know, Rapid City, 3 to 5 inches, so definitely not um, miserable events, right? If you want a strong event, you'll, you'll get a decent one. And then notice uh, the timing of this worst is today during the night. And it, it will continue into Saturday or into tomorrow, which would be Monday. Um, but impacts will be more limited and probably uh, just lasting on from the snow that's melting, turning to slush, maybe freezing. Over here, we have uh, very strong winds predicted and also a hard freeze warning. Probably some very, very cold temperatures. And yeah, 33 uh, 38 so that definitely could be uh, a, a concern and 
this location doesn't seem to be getting the brunt of it, but there probably are locations in there that get much colder, as that's the whole county. That's a, that's just one county, how big they are in Utah. So they had to highlight the whole thing. No, notice, look at that, Kansas City, under a winter weather advisory. And not for freezing rain, but just straight up snow. Three to four, one to two for Kansas City, one to two for Topeka, Maryville one to two, Curtisville two to three inches. And notice that the temperatures will be chilly, right? Look at Wednesday morning lows, widespread 20. So if you have fruit, you know, fruit trees, fruit crops, um, that will be uh, probably toast. Um, obviously, most vegetables and stuff like that isn't planted out yet, but if you do, take them indoors, cover them up. Um, notice uh, four, three inches widespread across northeastern uh, Kansas. That is definitely um, a decent event for Kansas, especially in you know late April. Potentially, uh, you know, maybe uh, a, a uh, in some locations the highest late April snowfall event. I would doubt it that say you know these locations had. Uh, many times saw uh, four inches in uh, late April. I know that's probably happened before as there, it, it tends to favor these areas, some snow, but usually not this far to the east with those blizzards. Okay, let's take a look at the models, right? So that's what you want to look at. Let's take a glance at this. Notice there's our storm. Again, I showed you on the radar, but it's kind of cut off across Thunder Bay. Definitely those snowing and uh, maybe you could see it's gonna, oh well, yeah, you could see right there. And this is what it looks like. So it's quite a bit more impressive, but there's our cold front. There's our main energy. Look at that spilling into Kansas. Sorry, Nebraska, eventually into Kansas, Colorado, Wyoming, into tonight, today, into tomorrow, tomorrow night. This is tomorrow by 7. You can see light rain across Illinois, Indiana, Michigan. So if you see rain tomorrow across Michigan and Indiana, the snow's still coming. Don't get, don't get too excited about a disappointment for those that don't want the snow. Notice what happens Tuesday morning, right, into Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> I'm spewing right now. Uh, Monday morning. Uh, Monday afternoon into Tuesday mo morning, uh, it's kind of going to be pivoting this band of very heavy snow, really disconnected from the main system, but it will be strengthening. And look, it swipes the whole state of Kansas into Oklahoma, into Missouri, northwestern Arkansas picks up quite a bit of snow out of this. Um, sorry, I meant to say southern Missouri picks up quite a bit of snow. This northwestern Arkansas may as well, just not probably not as much as it will be brief. Oklahoma City, maybe some rain. But then notice, into Illinois, Indiana, again, it, there will be transitions going back to forth uh, from rain and snow, especially the further south you go, and once the daytime heating comes, you know, it's obviously going to be cooler during the night. But, um, you know, at high intensity rates, the snow will be falling as it cools the atmosphere enough um, kind of to create a micro storm climate, right? Um, there's an actual word for it. That's just my interpretation of it. Notice, Indiana, Ohio, if you recall, yesterday's track was favoring more of northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin. At this point, I would say southern Wisconsin you're probably good for a heavy snow um same with most of uh you know chicago maybe the southern metro though picking up on some decent amounts and look at that indianapolis columbus lots of ohio into kentucky so i would argue that this is worse because further north the vegetation is less developed further south it's more developed so it may take more damage hopefully the cold air following this is not going to be that bad but again sometimes it's very hard to predict cold air and it seems like this will be the case again depending on where the track of this system goes the, you know that's where it will be colder notice look at that new york vermont new hampshire they see a quick swipe but a definitely decent snow albany you know i would say three to five inches for a lot of these locations and then look even if you don't get snow in wisconsin from that blizzard and it's not gonna be a blizzard but from that little swiper you will get some snow showers rain showers throughout the day on wednesday as this convective atmosphere produces those and notice this moves out into canada and becomes a pretty uh, pretty large windstorm okay take it looking at the taking a look at the snowfall amounts this is what we have now you can see it obviously drops a lot up here, especially if you were to adjust the ratios, probably, you know, over a foot in some of these areas. I would say Albany could pick up up to six inches. But look at that. Even Ohio, Indianapolis, definitely decent amounts. And wherever this axis sets up, further south, further north, the GFS includes it a bit further to the south in some models. You could see uh, there will be some pretty heavy snow. Into Missouri, three to four, five inches maybe into, in portions of Kansas. I wouldn't be surprised as this will be falling quickly but heavily. And if it, it were to fall during the night here, it has an easier time accumulating. Maybe not on a pavement, but definitely on elevated surfaces. And look at what this first wave of the storm will drop here across central Ontario. Decent amounts of snow to say the least. Okay, that's the GFS. So let's take a look at the Canadian. Again, it tracks the system in two waves. But look what it does more generous more widespread two to three inches st louis potentially a dusting right there central illinois two to three inches uh, kansas city three to four a bit more than what the national weather service thinks and look 
definitely decent amounts of snow for Cleveland, Indianapolis, maybe even Detroit. So obviously you've heard it a thousand times, wherever the track is, that will determine the actual characteristics of where the heavy snow is and just the characteristics, characteristics of the snow. And notice right now it's favoring locations even south of Detroit, and yesterday it was putting Detroit in the axis, right, Michigan. So it's tough to tell, um, just keep an eye out because just because the trend has been to the south doesn't mean you know, it will keep going. It could kind of just park across these locations or it may keep going and affect uh, further south locations or it may kind of jump back a little bit to the north, but probably not by too much. Notice into New York, right? Bordering into Canada, decent amounts of snow getting well over foot as you push into almost Quebec Quebec City. So uh, definitely a, a swipe of snow that's stretching pretty far to the south at this time of the year, you know. Um, I would say it's unusual, and if you were to take a look at the 2 meter <clears throat> temperature anomaly, you'll see why that's a concern, because the cold air behind it is chilly. However, I do want to say that this pattern does not last for long, and this may not be the best model to show you with, because the Canadian always keeps kind of a cooler bias. Um, but notice, it does warm things up, and it takes things from, I apologize about that, takes things from uh, quite a bit below to quite a bit above. and. I guess that's usual, right? We've gotten used to it. These crazy no spring uh, years where it's just from winter to summer and you get bits of spring sprinkled in rather than it's just the season. Notice though, there it is. Look at that, you know? This will probably be coming whether you like it or not. Summer's on their way. So if you hate the snow, stuff it out. It won't be that long. Um, I promise you this won't be a year with no summer. <laughs> it has happened before, but it's not this year. All right? I mean, maybe, but not that uh, it has any, it's unfounded, right? Why am I even talking about that? Okay, uh, let's take a look at the European model. European high res. Notice we have that first system, quite a bit of snow for just north of Lake Superior, Thunder City, Thunder Bay. Um, Thunder Bay, you may pick up a bit of snow. So again, um, uh, again, just keep an eye on that and it could even park for a few hours there. So drop a bit more than expected. Notice Colorado, right? Into Nebraska, Kansas. Definitely some decent amounts of snow, uh, decent rates, but again, it really starts intensifying once it moves out. Now, notice what the European does. The European keeps it at more of a slant, right? The, the, the band of snow isn't as horizontal as it was with the GFS, and it still had a slope to it, but not as much as the European model does. So what this means is that probably get by quicker with less amounts of snow for Kansas and Missouri. Still, nonetheless, drop some snow. Notice the European stretches of snow into Chicago, maybe southern Wisconsin, though it's light. Mainly uh, cities like Springfield, uh, St. Louis picking up some more heavier snow out of that. Though St. Louis may be more of a mix. Notice Indy, probably a few hours of very heavy snow, um, which again, it may sound really threatening, but it will be very warm when that's falling, probably above freezing. But northern Indiana, it may be cold enough for that to actually accumulate. And then notice, this low pressure, it doesn't slow down like some of the models thought yesterday it would be doing, so the snowfall amounts are lighter. However, look at this, it does slow down once it reaches the northeast, and it kind of zooms through Canada, uh, dropping decent amounts for the northeast, very strong winds, potentially some lake effect getting turned on, and also a very uh, a heavy snow for uh, Quebec, Toronto, Montreal, maybe not Toronto, but Montreal, Ottawa, Quebec, definitely cities to watch for. And uh, yeah, lake effect. You could see some lake effect does get turned on. If not the lake effect, then probably just some convective snow showers, rain, uh, you know, snow and rain squalls. And the European, just to show you, it does warm things up, you know? I mean, it's really rare to see such a low-lying area of snow this late. I wouldn't say it's unusual because of the last three years we've been seeing it, you know, constantly. But aside from the last three years, it is rather a rare event and doesn't happen probably even on a decade basis. However, again, the last three years, I guess, have been outliers. And then notice uh, the European developed some sort of nor'easter, and you can tell it's warm as the rain snow line is very far to the north, not across Indiana or Illinois within just a few days of that first event total uh, snowfall let's take a glance at that quickly and then i want to show you just the temperatures of what the european predicts which i think has the best handle on it notice right there's our snow again even if it does take a weaker track like the european shows look at that indiana five six you know cleveland six inches uh potentially kansas city around three to four uh, kansas uh, the whole state probably seeing around two to three uh chicago you know a lot of folks that watch me from there two three inches southern wisconsin probably just some snow showers very cold though um relatively for this time of the year notice right ontario lake erie a lot around those lakes uh, probably some heavier amounts maybe some lake enhancement adding on to that but uh notice that the heaviest snow may just pass north of quebec while the gfs had it kind of around the Quebec area. So definitely something to watch for. Notice Vermont, six, seven inches, maybe even some snow reaching into portions of Oklahoma. I do want to say that 
In the future, if I were to turn this on, obviously snow further to the north, but in terms of the United States uh, areas where it's not seen uh, that often, not much notice. Some snow for the Sierra Nevada and the west, which is definitely good news uh, as they need that. Uh, it's still dry, still a drought. So any precip they can get, they will take. All right, let's take a glance at the temperatures. As I said, I want to take a look at this model and show you. So right today, tomorrow, actually pretty warm even. Um, you could see that this was today. It was a beautiful day here. Um, it was cloudy, but it was nice, pleasant. And then look at this Monday, quite a drastic sharp uh, cutoff, right? Iowa in the 30s and then Missouri into the 60s and 70s. It catches up with Missouri and Illinois and the rest of the states. And you can see right there, that is Tuesday and it will be snowing during this time. That's why you will have a hard time accumulating. It's above freezing, but notice during the night, Boom, look at that right there. Frost developing, potentially some freeze if that snow falls. Look at that, 23. That would be very, very dangerous. And, uh, you know, around the lakes, maybe a bit warmer. Areas outside, frost, you know, just, just a hard freeze. And uh, that's definitely not good news. Notice the mountains, definitely chilly. Um, 3, 2 Fahrenheit, right, very cold. Notice, though, the day after, you know, not too miserable. And then another night of a chill into Wednesday and Thursday. So Wednesday night, look at that. We see very chilly conditions, especially further across the northeast, starting to break up here across the Midwest. And then as he pushes forward, look at that. You know, that's not bad. And then into, uh, so yeah, that was Thursday. This is Friday. This is now Saturday. You can see maybe not a heat wave, but it does get warmer and the cold air is kind of staved off to the north. And look, even some very warm temperatures getting in. So, you know. Summer's coming along, unfortunately, that's the bad thing with these systems, that they could do their damage and be gone uh, very quickly, but again, the damage is done uh, with, the, with the crops, mainly being fruit trees and uh, of sorts. Uh, RDPS, Can uh, Canadian high-res model, I just want to run these through, quickly show you what they, kind of how these models differ. Um, I am running a bit low on time, uh, not because I want to finish this, just because I don't like to make super long videos. This is what it shows, right? Decent amounts, again, very similar to what uh, the Canadian and kind of European track does, uh, pretty far south, again, compared to yesterday. But again, I would argue that makes uh, things worse. Notice around St. Louis, not much snow. Um, that could be, again, because of an urban he uh, island effect, which kind of, uh, you know, the temperatures will be marginal already. And if you just add an extra degree or two from the city, uh, which does happen at times, um, then, you know, that could definitely be falling mainly as rain. So that will be interesting to see. NAM model, a a again, a, a pretty good model. Um, and this is what it shows in terms of snowfall. You can see it does get a bit excited about that kind of uh, early wave of snow into tomorrow night, which I could still show you. But look at that. It really centers it across Illinois, Indiana. Again, these type of mounts seem rather unlikely, uh, especially this far north because a lot of the models are trending it further to the south. But I would not be surprised to see maybe some 8-inch amounts across northwest Indiana into Ohio. Again, I'm favoring more of a low uh, southern track, but, you know, if the NAM is consistent and the other models start shifting up to the north, it's still a possibility. But, uh, you know, nevertheless, even if you don't get a lot of snow, Chicago or Southern Michigan, Iowa, you'll probably get some because of just how the system is set up. Uh, I don't know if I, I showed you this model, but I think I might have showed you an older run. Yeah, that's what the newer one shows. Pretty much the same. And now I quickly, I know, more models, one more. Uh, let's take a look at this one. I actually haven't looked at this one yet. Uh, this is the UK one. I just look at this one just to see where it lies. You know, it's usually good. Oh, look at that. It takes it even further south. Which, again, I would argue is pretty bad, uh, but uh, possibly a possibility, right? Um, let's take a glance at what the National Weather Service thinks. So this is kind of the forecast put out onto a map. Look what they're showing. Not much here, but again, I do think that this is still a bit away. And they will be updating those amounts um, as the offices will kind of start forecasting. I think there will be some heavier amounts than this. There will probably be pockets of 4 to 5 in Kansas and Missouri. So, you know, they'll probably change this up this or maybe even if they don't uh, then i could just disagree with them notice into detroit they they favor that or area instead of cleveland which again may have to adjust and i do think there will be definitely some six inch amounts if that scenario does unfold so i think they're underestimating that i do want to show you the ensembles so the eps just like laid out all over uh, a bunch of you know like 50 mile uh, 50 models compressed into one image and you can see they're favoring a bit further south than yesterday still though pretty broad range as a lot of models are disagreeing but uh definitely decent amounts you know five inches averaged out i would say that some models are probably showing 10 some models are probably showing two and you get it on five uh, this is what the sorry that was the one from midnight so it was a bit older but yeah okay you can see the newer one just takes it even a bit further south but same amounts and i do want to show you the gefs models right so just to give you a good idea i know i'm showing you a lot of models but i want you to not just look at one forecast that's like looking at one news source right especially since uh, 
these models are known to be biased and new sources are uh, arguably biased, right? So notice that uh, we have um, snow according to the end. The GFS models aren't as excited, surprisingly, even though the GFS itself is. Okay, and this video is getting pretty long. I do want to show you one quick last thing, the herd model, right? This model goes out very far every six, uh, six hours. And unfortunately, the very long one is just coming in, but it's not fully in. So I'll just jump back to the last one. It's a few hours old. However, again, a lot of the models I was showing you were a few hours old as they only come out every six hours. Notice what it does show around six 7 p.m., which is right around now, some decent thunder shower activities, which uh, I would say was a bit overblown by the herd model, though, that are definitely there. And let's go back here. Goodness. There you are. Look at that. There's our cold front. There's our system across Thunder Bay. There's our snow just kind of spearing its way into the Midwest. Look what this does, the herd model. It shows this band of moderate snow setting up across Iowa and into Illinois as rain across uh, around 2 p.m. tomorrow, 3 p.m., and showers, quite a bit of them, snow showers to the north. Now, this won't be anything significant, but it could bring, you know, some rain a bit earlier on. That's good. It's kind of dry here, so we'll take that. But then notice, by tomorrow night, this progresses, changes over into snow, and look at that. Boom. The herd model is usually a really good high-risk model, but it advertises a more northern scenario. And look at that. It shows a lot of showers and the snow pretty far to the south as well. So more of a northern track. So the models are still in a bit of a disagreement. And I do want to show you that, look at that, the showers and storms continue to barrage Florida. So they were a bit dry. That's a good thing. But again, too many, of, too much of a good thing is also a thing. And look at that. Decent amounts, especially if this were to be a northern scenario. And it cuts it off here because it doesn't go out that far. Again, just keep your eyes to the sky, keep your eyes to the radar, um, check your forecast, be prepared because cold may be there, so protect your fra uh, your fruits, vegetables, whatever you may have out there. And I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.